everyone. Today we're gonna be checking out the Bugera Power Soak 1, and I wanna compare it against my Rivera Rock Crusher. I've owned many passive power attenuators, and for some reason the Rock Crusher is one of my favorite ones. Now, this is a $550 unit, so I thought it would be really important to compare something like this to it, because this is $99 US. Now, there's some feature sets that this has, and this one doesn't, and vice versa, so let's go over that first. Now, the first thing to point out about this unit is it's a clone of the Jetonator. In fact, you can see it looks exactly like the Jetonator, so I'm going to assume that it pretty much is that unit, especially since they both come out of China. Now, this unit has an emulated mic out, which we will compare the two units later on in this video. We have a speaker output, of course, and more importantly, there's a 4, 8, and 16 ohm input, so you can run either 4, 8, or 16 ohm amplifier loads and then run it out to your cabinet. Now, the Rock Crusher only lists a 16 and 8 ohm load on the unit. Something else that's noticeable, of course, is the size. Both units are massively different in size. The Rock Crusher is very sturdy, well built, and heavy where this is a lot lighter and smaller. Now the Rock Crusher is made in Burbank, California, which is uh, nice to see a higher quality unit made in the US. They both have a mic simulated line out control with a separate line out volume control. The Rock Crusher also has two features. It has a edge and warm uh, switch. The warm is to warm up the tone. The edge is to simulate how mic going to the edge of a speaker. The other interesting thing about the uh, Rock Crusher that's a nice feature is it has a bypass switch. So it means once you attenuate your amp, if you wanna just go back to being the amp, you can go ahead and bypass it. Now, something I noticed that even when you bypass it, it doesn't sound exactly like it did coming through the amp and it's not exactly the same volume. It's still a little kind of smooshed down a little bit. But what's important to point out on the Bulgara is that even with the Bulgara at 100%, in other words, it's try saying 100% of the amp volume is coming through, you're exactly at about half of the amp's volume. So no matter what, you're attenuated. In other words, once you plug this in between your amp and your cabinet, you're attenuated. The first thing to note about an, a passive amp attenuator is that it doesn't require any power. So this is the unit. You don't have to take any wall warts or power supplies. This is exactly how it is. You just need to have an extra speaker cable. So you can plug this into a combo amp. Take the lead that comes off the speaker, plug it in the back of this, and this is gonna go between your amp and that speaker. Of course, if you have a head and cabinet situation, that makes it even easier. But either way, this just goes between your amplifier and your speaker. What it's allowing you to do is turn the amplifier up as loud as you'd like it to get the sound that you love. In other words, set the sound exactly where you love it, where it's maybe too loud for stage, at home, or recording, and go ahead and use this to adjust how much of that volume is going to make it to the speaker. So you can have your amp cranked at bedroom levels. Now something to note on this unit is it only takes up to 100 watts. So if you have a 120 watt head, which is probably not likely, but possible, you can't use this unit where the Rivera takes up to 120 watts. Now I went ahead and plugged in my Paul Reed Smith Custom 50 head, and I have it through the Rivera Rock Crusher. We will do a sound comparison in a minute where I mic up the cabinet. Right now I just want to give you the impression of the attenuators. The amp is actually blisteringly loud. Massive difference. Now the Rivera has a switch that is notched. So in other words, when you clear it, you can definitely feel the click to let you know which setting you're at. Of course, the lowest setting being not quite half. I'm gonna say about 20% reduced. So go ahead and turn that on. Now we'll go and then as you go, you can keep going until you get to the last switch, which then lets you have this extra dial called studio and it can get as quiet as no volume at all. Okay, so go ahead, turn that back up. Go back up. So what I have here is a very comfortable practice volume. And what I, the reason I'm doing it with the open mic in the room is because I want you to hear my string noise. It's a great way when you're on the internet to kind of validate where the amp is in a volume. So you can hear my string noise. So the amp is slightly louder than my string. Okay, so like I said, now we can go ahead and turn it to the point where now you're hearing more of my strings. And that's how quiet I have this 50 watt animal. This is definitely play at night, don't disturb the neighbors, or even record. Okay, so that's why I like the Rivera. Let's talk about the Bugera. 
As previously noted, once you plug in the Bugera, there's no way to true bypass the unit or bypass the unit. So even at full blast, you're only getting half of your amp, which is still pretty loud compared to where it has set. Instead of having notches, this is just a dial. You can take it all the way down so you can hear a little bleed through. You can, I don't even know if you guys will hear that. You can hear my strings. Turn it up a little bit. Now, something I figured out real quick with the Bugera was that it got mushy really quick. There's something about it I just didn't really like off the bat. I felt like the Rivera, I was still getting a true representation of the amp that I just had. This sounds like the amp a little mushier, kind of like how the amp sounds when you turn the amp down, a little fizzy. So what I learned on the Bugera was to correct that, you just turn the gain down a little bit on the amp. And it cleans back up. So although I could say the Bugera is not as clear and defined as the Rivera Rock Crusher, the truth is with a little adjustment of the amp, I got them sound pretty on par, which shocked me because of the price difference of $550 to $100. The other thing I noticed was keeping the amp at about, you know, uh, halfway, even a 50 watt amp running it for a prolonged period of time, it didn't get hot. Neither one of them gets warm. The bottom of the Bugera will get room temp. I don't know, warm maybe a little bit, but not much. So what I'll do is I'll mic the uh, cabinet up, go ahead and compare them. We'll give you a sound sample of the Bugera and the Rivera so you can hear the difference yourself. <laughs> Now, one thing that these things are known for is doing direct recording. So what I want to do is do a little of that. So we're going to run a line out of these things and see how they sound, which one emulates a little better. So we'll compare the uh, Bugera and the Rivera in a line out. This will be just a line out. You won't hear any microphone. <laughs> So I have to admit, I'm impressed with the Bugera. It would be equally fair if they were equal price, but given the price difference, it really puts the Bugera in light in a different way. Now, one of the things I was concerned about was durability, but given the fact that this is $100 versus $550, you would have five of these have to break, <laughs> uh, which could concern you maybe in a live gig, but something to think about is that you can buy two of these for even less than half of this unit and have a backup. So, and they would also be smaller. Two of these would be smaller than this. So there's a lot of reasons to win. So if you're asking me, which would I prefer? Well, I think if I was in a store and I AB'd them like I did today, I would probably just buy the Bugera or the Jetonator if I want to go with that brand name. But for now, since I bought both units, I'm happy with both units. As always, you need to try it yourself to figure out what best fits your needs. Uh, also, if you have other attenuators that you think it's worth checking out, please put those in the descriptions down below too. And also, if you've had good or bad experiences, when I went on the internet and looked at reviews, not video reviews, but written and uh, purchase reviews, they both run almost a perfect five-star review. So it was impressive. And given the fact that what I've experienced with both, I agree with almost every review I saw. The only thing I can't attest to is the durability of the Bugera. Now, because uh, I haven't had it that long, but that's something if you guys have experience with that, you can put in the notes, maybe educate us on that as well. As always, guys, I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. This was really fun. And until next time, know your gear.